a month ago, God was doing a, a, a stirring in, in my heart and in my soul as I, as I pray all the time for, for our Pacific Grove campus and for Shoreline at large. Uh, in, in a matter of eight days, uh, five of my 10 core team leaders, these are leaders that are mostly volunteer, leading ministries who love Shoreline Church, specifically PG and that community to reach it, came to me and, and shared some hard news. Within eight days, I got an email, I got a phone call, and I got an email saying, because of life stuff, because someone lost a job, and they need to find another job, and they're feeling called out of the area, because, of, uh, because they need to get another job, another couple said, we need to get another job, and it's pulling them away and, and not available for, for the weekend, and because of, of, of family stuff with, with kiddos, and it's just a lot of driving, and they feel like they wanna be more in tune and plugged in with the Monterey campus and the thriving youth culture here, um, they're gonna have to step down from ministry. Big deal. That's a big, those, those are my friends. Th th those five have been with us from the very beginning. And so I started praying and I said, Kevin, uh, uh, help me on this. You're, you're my brother, you're the lead pastor. What do you, what do you think about this? What are you feeling? Because I was feeling it deeply. Uh, and I didn't know exactly what that meant, so. And so at the same time, I'm, as the lead pastor, looking at called and knowing we have two more months of called, and people are still giving towards it for the next two months, and then knowing that at the end of those, those two years, our financial reality will change, because there were special commitments made. My wife and I made a commitment to call that we can't sustain that level of giving. We're gonna give more than we gave before, we can't give it at that level indefinitely, so some of that giving is gonna go away, and we're looking at, at you know, uh, Love Our Central Coast, and Guatemala, and Pacific Grove, and Organic Outreach International, saying, can we sustain all of these ministries at the same level we have been? And so I said to Nate, man, one of the questions we're asking is, which of our ministries are thriving and growing and which of them are doing good but maybe not totally thriving and maybe at a type, type where we say, maybe, maybe it's time to transition that ministry and end that ministry. And then, and then Nate was dealing with the issue of that we had set markers or kind of benchmarks yeah. for each of our ministries and in Pacific Grove, we had four big markers that we said, here's the things we wanna see happen after two years to know that it's thriving and we can continue forward. And so just share what, what we had kind of talked yeah. about years ago. Yeah, four markers. And, and these are really kind of benchmarks that we said, I mean, how do we know if the campus is thriving? How do we know if we're going the right direction? That's important, right? And so I just wanna be very honest with you and let you know that uh, marker number one, before we even launched, was, was to find a permanent facility. Because in Pacific Grove, the last uh, small town of America, right, you need to plant deep roots. And having a permanent facility allows you to plant deep roots. We haven't found a permanent facility yet. Not because we haven't been praying. Uh, believe you me, we've been praying. Uh, there are challenges with being a church in a box in a way, being, being, being mobile. And, and, so, and not because we, we're saying we're not going to throw money at it. We, we are. We're just, we're, we need the right space. And the right space hasn't come up. Okay, let's be honest about that. Marker number two is that we would have two services at some point because a healthy church culture is one that where volunteers can come and they can receive and they can grow, but they can also serve. So attend one, serve one. We're not there yet. We're just, partly, largely due to the facility, it holds 500 people. And when it's cold there, it's really cold. And those chairs are made for third grade butts. You know, like it's, <laughs> it's difficult, but we're not there yet. We're just, we're not. And that breaks my heart because, because when people are serving, they don't get to go to church. In PG, and, and that's a big deal. Marker number three is that the finances. Uh, we got to be honest of where we at with with our finances, and we want to be financially self-sufficient as a campus, so the Monterey campus doesn't have to, have to float us. We're not there yet. We're not even halfway there yet. We got to be honest. And the fourth one that I felt like we could really hang our hat on is thriving volunteer teams, especially the core team. That was true. We are we are in the trenches. We are serving with all our heart. And then four weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago, I found out that half my team is going for very good reasons. Not because they're indifferent about the vision or the leader or the, or the philosophy of ministry. No, no, no. They actually all came to me and said, we don't want to go. But we feel like we need to because of X, Y, and Z. And so yeah. that yeah. was the reality. Yeah. And so what churches are famous for doing is churches are famous for doing something and then keep doing it forever because you just do, even if it's not moving the direction you want to go. So here's the reality. Pacific Grove, we've seen 23 people put their faith in Jesus for the first time yeah. through Pacific Grove. And yeah. 13 people be baptized. So God has done a great work there, done a mighty work, and lives have been touched. But we're looking forward and saying, okay, we scattered the seed in different places in Guatemala, around the world with Organic Outreach International, in Pacific Grove. We scattered seed, and we said, what, which ones are really thriving and growing? And of all the different things that we launched with called, the one that has been probably the toughest soil, mm -hmm. and it's not for a lack of farming and trying and watering yeah. and working hard, but we're just saying it's not bearing the fruit that we, that we were looking for. And so we sat down and we talked and prayed with the management team. We pulled, mm -hmm. invited the leadership team in and we talked and prayed and said, okay, is this God's timing 
that we would say we launched Pacific Grove, it had a great ministry for two years, and we closed down the campus of Pacific Grove. Now, all of the resources that we'd say, all the, the people would come to Monterey, and all of the resources, the sound equipment would be used, the, 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 the trailers would be used for different ministries, the staff comes, with, <laughs> comes back to Monterey, and we don't lose any of them, and we say, okay, instead of you know, doing our outreach in two locations, we just bring it back into one for a season. We prayed about it, talked about it, and that's where we came down. Yeah. And I, I actually said to Nate, I said, Nate, with the idea of coming on the Monterey campus and helping us start new communities, and we're gonna continue to minister. We've got, I think, 12 growth groups in Pacific mm -hmm. Grove. Those are gonna continue. People in Pacific Grove are still part of Shore, and it'll just be, uh, the only difference is we won't have a Sunday service in Pacific Grove. It'll be here together. And we worked through this, prayed through it, and that's the conclusion we came to. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to let you know that as a team, because when we launch new things and we invest in things, we're like, we're excited, we wanna do this. And here's what I hit, hit me just, I think, two mornings ago. I was on my knees praying, and I said, Lord, you know, as we're gonna share with the congregation, I said, did we do the right thing? And this is what God put on my heart. We started the campus in Pacific Grove at just the right time, mm. and it honored God. And we're gonna close it at just the right time, and that honors God too. Because things have a life cycle, they have a season. And our ministry there continues. And actually I asked Nate, we're looking at Nate being part of starting new, multiple new communities and different ministries here and all around our communities. And Nate said to me the other day, he said, I wonder if we could reach more people for Jesus and minister to more people by this new model than where we're at. And I said, well, if this is what God's leading us to do, I think that's what God's gonna do. Yeah. So here's what I wanna do. At Pacific Grove, right now, Pastor Nate's gonna stand up. It's Mike Magic, he's there with you. <laughs> Next service, he's gonna be there. So have a fun time talking with Pastor Nate. And Nate, would you just pray and close this part yeah. of our service? God, I, I, I praise you that uh, just through the story and the message and the lessons we can learn from Micah are relevant for us today. That, that we are called to, uh, to be truth bearers and truth sharers, and that's what we wanna do. And we wanna be honest about what you're doing in our lives, and there are seasons of ministry, and, and even though Shoreline PG is coming to an end, God, I have great hope for what you're gonna continue to do. This is hard, I've poured my life into this, yes. but God, I believe that you're, you're not closing down the church in PG. We're not abandoning Pacific Grove. We're actually motivated by the new vision that you're given to us to continue to be a part of reaching. There, there is so much more that needs to be done. God, I thank you that you are empowering us and giving us inspiration to go even further and deeper. So help us in that. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name, amen.